Hello friends, welcome to another lecture of Make Mechanical Simple. In the normal discussion, we mechanics to solve an important topic and that is how to draw shear force and bending moment diagram. So, shear force and bending moment diagram is a prerequisite lecture I already said. That is what are the important points to be noted and what are the different types of loading and what are the different types of beams. I will explain this and also about sign conventions. Now, if you are interested in this video, you will be able to share the force and bending moment diagram correctly. So, if you know already these basic things, no need to watch this lecture. If you are new to share the force and bending moment diagram, you better go and watch my prerequisite lecture for share the force and bending moment diagram and then come back. Okay? See, before going to draw the share the force and bending moment diagram, you should know what is the meaning of shear force at a section in a beam and what is the meaning of bending moment at a section in a beam. So, what do you mean by shear force at a section in a beam? So, shear force is the uh, algebraic sum of the forces acting either to the left or right side of the section. Okay, suppose you want to find shear force at this point. You can consider either all the forces, algebraic sum of all the forces acting towards the right of the section. Or you can consider all the forces, algebraic sum of all the forces acting towards the left side of the section. Okay, you will get the shear force. Now, uh, for drawing shear force diagram, what you are going to do is, uh, we are going to uh, find the values of shear force at all the salient points. Salient points means... Uh, a, C, D, B in this case. So, first of all, what is the shear force acting at point A? See, this is a cantilever beam. So, uh, we can start uh, from the free end only. Okay. And if it is a simply supported beam, we could have started either from the left or right side. There is no issue. But in this case, it is a cantilever beam. So, we have to start from the free end itself. So, here free end means it is a right side. So, shear force at A, shear force at say, toward, to the right of A, there is no load acting. To the right of A, there is no load acting. So, the shear force at A is 0. Now, what is the shear force at C? So, here we are doing uh, uh, by means of a summation approach. Okay. What is the shear force at C? To find shear force at C, what you do? We have to add all the loads acting to the right of C. Okay. So, to the right of C, we have only a UDL acting. Okay. So, what is the total load of this UDL? The load intensity of this UDL is 2 kN per meter. And it is acting over a span of 1 meter. So, what is the total load acting? That will be 2 into 1. Okay. Now, we have to consider sign convention also. So, we are starting from the right side. And the load is acting downward. So, it is right downward. So, right to downward, according to the sign convention of uh, shear force diagram, it is positive. Right to downward or left upward is positive. So, this is positive. So, we will get the value as 2 kN. The shear force at C is 2 kN. Now, coming to the next important point, that is uh, shear force at D. See, at D we have a concentrated load. Okay. So, because of that, it is better to split this point into two as D1 and D2 because uh, we have already discussed in our previous lecture that uh, at a concentrated load uh, there will be a sudden shift in the shear force diagram okay or there is a sudden vertical shift in the shear force diagram so because of that to represent that we have to split the point D as D1 and D2 and in D1 we will not be considering this key 3 kN okay so without considering this 3 kN what are the loads acting towards the right of this section we have again this 2 kN into 1 meter that is 2 kN only okay clear now by now including 3 kN or considering this 3 kN we can write this shear force at FD2 as 2 kN plus 3 kN because there is a sudden change in there is a sudden change in shear force by a value of 3 kN. So what is the total value? Now it is 5 kN. Okay. So the shear force at F D2 is 5 kN. Now what about uh, shear force at B? Shear force at B. After 3 kN there is no load acting at this portion. 
so it is again 5 kilo Newton so now we have found out all the values of shear forces at all the important points now we have to mark uh, these values in the shear force diagram by using some suitable scale so here the shear force value 0 at C we have 2 kilo Newton so with by using some suitable scale I have marked this as 2 kilo Newton and at point at D1 at D we have two points that is 2 kilo Newton here and 2 plus 3 5 kilo Newton so if this is 2 you have to use some suitable scale okay this is 5 kilo Newton so this is 2 kilo Newton this is again 2 kilo Newton and this is 5 kilo Newton okay and at B again it is 5 kilo Newton B again it is 5 kilo Newton so now we have marked all the shear force values in the shear force diagram now we have to show the variation how the shear force diagram varies uh, between all these points so between A and C we have a uniformly distributed load so in the case of a UDL uh, in the case of UDL what is the variation in shear force diagram the shear force diagram will vary linearly in the case of SFT so we have to use a straight line to join these two points and if there is no there is no load between this D and C there is no load if there is no load uh, the shear force diagram will be constant will be constant that also we have studied in the previous lecture and if there is a constant a concentrated load there will be a sudden shift so this sudden shift the magnitude of this line is 3 kilo Newton because there is a sudden change in uh, the shear force now there is no load between B and D so again it is a constant now we have to join this so this is actually the final shear force diagram okay very easy now now in the same way we have to find the uh, bending moment diagrams also so in this case the shear force diagram is completely positive okay see next number and a bending moment diagram where can I look up the bending moment diagram correct I to work in a minute then a bending moment in the sign conventions are you know I'm a party shouldn't do sagging moment positive I recum other one a hawking moment a negative I recum but I the question would be better I to mention like another thing any loads that are acting upward either to the left or to the right side they are positive the moment created by them are positive that means if a load is acting in the upward direction either to the left of the section or to the right of the section that will create a sagging moment that means it's like this sagging moment okay on the other hand what is hogging moment uh, if any force is acting downward either to the left or to the right of the section so it will create a hogging moment okay so it will be negative so in this case it is a cantilever beam in the case of cantilever beam all the forces are, are acting downward so it will only create a hogging moment so a negative moment okay so here in this case we will be only getting negative moment values okay so we can start from the right side that is what is the moment that a moment that a will be zero because to the right of a there is no loading the loading uh, so moment that a will be zero what about the moment at c moment at c we have to consider all the forces acting towards the uh, right of c okay so we have a udl over a span of one meter so we have to put a negative sign because it is creating a hogging moment so it's acting downward right so two into one into uh, this uh, UDL is concentrated exactly at the mid of this span right so we have to multiply with 1 by 2 then only it will become uh, moment so what is the value here minus 1 kilo Newton meter now what is the moment at D moment at D we have to consider all the forces uh, to the right of D so we have a UDL here that is uh, minus 2 into 1 over a span of 1 meter so this is now load into distance distance between D and center of this UDL right 
distance between D and center of this D, UDL. That is 1 plus 0.5. That is 1.5. So we have to multiply with 1.5. So what we'll get? We'll get minus 3 kilonewton meter. Okay. Now to find the moment at B, we have to consider all the forces acting to the right side of B. So to the right side of B, we have a UDL and we have a concentrated load. Okay. So this UDL is creating a moment here and this uh, concentrated load is also creating a moment here. So the UDL uh, minus 2 into 1. Why I'm taking a negative sign? Because it is a Hawking moment into what is the distance between the center of this UDL and B. That is 1 plus 1, 2 plus 0.5. That is 2.5. And again minus and the 3 kN is also creating a hogging moment because it is also acting downward okay right downward okay so 3 into 1 minus 3 into 1 so what is the total value we'll get minus 8 kN meter now we have found out all the values of bending moment uh, at all the important points now we have to plot the same in the bending moment diagram so the moment at a is 0 and moment at C we have found it as minus 1 so I'm plotting it here this is minus 1 and uh, uh, moment at D is uh, we got some minus 3 so let's say this is minus 3 and moment at B is uh, some minus 8 so you better use some scales while drawing okay uh, for minus 1 you can take 1 centimeter then for minus 3 you can take 3 centimeter uh, like that okay now what about the variations between A and C the load is UDL so if we have a UDL the bending moment diagram will have a parabolic variation so you have to draw here a parabola and write it here it is a parabolic variation and between C and D there is no loading so if there is no load the variation will be linear in bending moment diagram okay in the case of uh, shear force diagram it will be a constant and again between B and D there is no loading so it will be again a straight line okay so you have to you have to use scales okay so you have to use scales so, so this this is this is also straight line okay now you have to hatch this area for better visibility now this is negative and it is positive okay so remember one thing that in a cantilever beam the maximum bending moment will always occur at the fixed uh, support okay and the minimum bending moment that is the bending moment will be zero at the free end okay so i hope all of you have un clearly understood how to draw bending moment and shear force diagram in the case of a cantilever beam so if you found this lecture useful consider subscribing my channel and click the bell icon for get further updates thanks for watching